Hey everybody and welcome back to Critical Crafting. This is Dylan, your crafting DM here. Every year around Halloween, I kind of go on a kit bash dollar store bug and I like to buy a bunch of skeletons and make something really cool. So this year, what I made was this Dracolich or Skeletal Dragon. And I know you can go out and buy something like this, but it's a lot more expensive than it is to make one. And in the end, I think this thing looks pretty cool. Plus, the lightning is removable. Ugh, it is always the same spiel with this guy. I tell you what, I have used my dark powers to put links so that you can fast forward to segments of the video and you don't have to listen to him blah blah blah. I'll also have affiliate links to all the products I use in this video posted in the description below. A great way to support this channel is by following those affiliate links and you can get all the different products you need to make a really cool looking Dracolich. Always remember to use a reference when you're looking at the body parts you will use for the creature. Next, you must remove the bat wings. Wait, remove the- <gasps> Now you must rip apart the rat skeleton. The legs may prove a bit of a difficulty, so take some filament cutters and chop them off. Beautiful. So apply some glue to the wing, and then to the shoulder hole, and then uh, extend that up onto the wing a little bit with your hot glue gun. Repeat the same thing for the second wing, making sure that you apply glue both to the joint on the bottom and the top. Since we're going to use a lot of the body parts later, I like to go ahead and chop everything on the bird apart. So I cut the tail off, cut each of the wings off, cut the legs off, and cut the head off. Ah, 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 ah. Once that's done, I cut the claws off the backs of the feet. Then I cut each of the toes off at the first joint. I trim the middle joint off of each of the toes to shorten them up a little bit so I can glue them back on. Now using my trusted glue gun, I glue each of those shortened toes back onto the feet. I cut the excess keys off of the arms of the rat skeleton. I then chopped them in half of the elbow joint so I can glue it together with a new pose. After this, I do the same with the thumb, cutting it off so I can reposition it with my hot glue gun. This gives it a creepy hanging hand feel, blah blah blah. I always like to use a lot of glue in these joints because I don't like when my skeletal creations fall apart on me. One quick tip if you don't like waiting for hot glue to dry is just put some water on it and it'll make it set up faster. Now we glue my weird bird legs onto the gross Frankenstein thing I made with the rat skeleton and bat wings. And I take the arms from the rat and glue them in place. I don't like the curve of the tail, so like Dr. Frankenstein, I make my own creation by chopping bits of it off and repositioning them. Using my bird spine and rib cage, I cut the ribs off of the spine because I'm going to use that to make part of my tail. I cut in at a V to create a sort of spiked or V shape at the end. I then glue all of my tail pieces together, connecting my rat spine to my bird spine to my rat tail. Now to cut up the bat head. No, not the bat head. First we're going to take and cut off the ears and kind of clean that up so it looks smooth. You monster. I've decided I want my head looking to the side. So I'm going to take and cut in an angle so that my skull is going to be kind of angled onto my spine. 
and we'll just glue that into place. You may find you get excess glue in some of your joints, so I like to take a shish kebab stick and kind of blend those in. Because I'm making a blue dracolich, I need some ear bones. You idiot, that is cartilage. Okay, well, it looks cool. In any event, I'm using my bird wings to kind of chop them up and create what I'm going to use to make those sort of skeletal ears. Once you find a good position for those, just glue them in. At this point, the Dracolid should look a little something like this. But the front horn comes in late. I cut down the remainder of my bird wing. This is what I'm going to use to make my horn. So I chop off all of the little fingers that are on there. And it starts to look like a horn. Now I'm going to take the horn and kind of cut it until it's sharper. Sharp as a vampire's tooth or my wit. I use some sandpaper to kind of sand down any rough spots on that horn after I've cut it. And once I like how it looks, I glue it in. I like to use the glue to kind of fill in some of the areas where there are gaps. And then I repeat the same step using one of the smaller bones from the bird to create a smaller horn. Honestly, you can use just about any bone for this, but these were on hand and they seemed like a good choice. Your defiance against God is an abomination worse than myself. I've decided I want to reposition the hand, so I cut it off. Then I glue it back on in the position that I want. It's a little more open and looks a bit more like he's trying to grab people. That is looking pretty good, but I think there's more we can do. Using some of the skeletons I used in my bone golem video, I'm going to make some cool fingers for this. So the first thing to do is chop off the arms. Once that's done, we cut off all the hands. Then we split the remaining two bones in half. Make an unwary traveler amongst your many undead minions. Once that's done, I use my cutters to sharpen one end of each of the bones. Like a sharpened nail for clawing throats? Sure. I then glue each of those onto the finger, making some cool little hand positions. I like to use super glue to reinforce all of my hot glue joints to make sure they don't break unexpectedly. And since he is lazy, he uses Instaset to make sure the super glue sets up very quickly. At this point, your Dracolich might look a little something like this. Mine is that horrible failure of lightning. To base coat my Dracolich, I'm using Apple Barrel's Classic Caramel and Canary Yellow and mixing the two together to get the consistency and the color that I want. I then paint that over the entire Dracolich. When you're done, it's gonna look a little something like this. Ugh, the paint is good, but the pose sucks! To get the pose that I want, I'm going to break off some of the joints that I've glued together and reposition them so it's a little bit more dynamic and looks like he's climbing up something. Here you can see the reposition pose. Looks much more dynamic. To make the base, I'm using insulation foam and my handy Woodland Scenics wire cutter. I absolutely love this cutter and I use it to do all kinds of stuff. Here you can see me cutting at an angle because essentially I'm making pride rock. I glue these two pieces together and I get rolling. Then I take my Willen Seamus wire cutter and I kind of cut in at an angle again, sort of beveling this and kind of wiggling it here and there to get some natural formations. I just sort of cut away, not really randomly, but it kind of seems like that a little bit. The big thing is to make it feel natural. Once I have it in the shape I want, I'm going to glue my feet down onto my rock. Because I want this to look natural, I'm adding a few extra rock pieces around and I even take and just sort of peel little bits and pieces that I can glue in. Look at him, talking about the natural as he glues these rocks onto the base of an undead monstrosity. I love using weird or cheap things to make texture, so here all I'm doing is taking a rough rock and using it to kind of peel off and create some additional texture on top of the foam that I already have. This will make it look a lot more natural. Then I take and fill in some of the gaps with all the little bits that I have kind of shaved off. 
I start most of my rocky bases off with a flat black from Apple Barrel and just base coat the entire thing. Black is such a cheerful color, don't you think? Because this was such a large miniature, I decided to use a new product, 250 milliliters of quick shade dark tone from Army Painter. This stuff is really effective, but you need to use a cheap brush. It'll ruin your good ones, and this is oil based, so it can be a little hard to work with. I liked using a paper towel to kind of clean up where it got too dark. It looks something a little bit like this when you're done. As a side note, you can make a poor man's wash out of umber brown from Apple Barrel and some water, and you can do that with basically any other paint. I always work in layers, so the next thing I'm gonna do is make my first layer. I use Apple Barrel White with Canary Yellow and mix them together along with some classic caramel. Then I paint this in sort of a dry brushing manner and kind of just picking up on the major details all over my piece. Once that's done, I add a very thin layer of the quick shade dark tone. You can get this by not shaking it and just getting stuff off the top. It'll look a little bit like this when you're done. When it comes to detailing, I like to use more expensive paints because they're higher quality. First, I paint with Otig Brown from D&D's Nolzer's Marvelous Pigment Set. Once that's done, I take a little bit of the brown from Vallejo and I accentuate the edges. And then I take some Army Painter Matte White and blend those together. The big thing here is I'm painting wet, so all these colors kind of blend. As you watch, you'll see them doing basically the same thing in all these areas, blending these three colors together to create depth. You call that depth? Try being buried six feet underground in a coffee. The big thing to remember is that you're blending these colors together. The other thing you need to think about is you're gonna want the brown closest to the creases in the bone. Then you're going to want to have the Otiug brown a little bit closer to the tops and the white on the area that would be the most raised. This is going to give you that sort of illusion or kind of make things pop a little bit and give you a sense of depth. Remember, this is not that complicated. While it looks rather advanced to some, this is just blending three colors together. Keep in mind where the depth is and where the height is on the bones, and you would come up with something that looks very incredible. Almost as incredible as sucking an entire village dry during the night. <laughs> In some areas, you're gonna to wanna to create depth by making a gradient, which essentially means putting the dark on one side of the bone, then the Ochiuk brown, and then the white, like you're seeing me doing here on the tail. Because the wings are so large and there isn't a ton of detail on these dollar store minis, you're gonna to have to work with them a little bit. I found that kind of blending the colors all throughout and trying to focus on heightening areas where they connect worked really well to sort of push these and make them look a lot better than they would as a flat color. Okay, our Dracoluch is looking pretty good. If you don't say so yourself. But there's a bit more we can do. To dry brush the gray, I use Apple Barrow's Pewter Gray and their white. I mix the two together and then lightly dry brush or feather over my piece, so I'm picking up all the highlights. Once that's done, I take the mossy green and do the same thing, just kind of feathering it over areas. And I do the same with the umber brown. That looks pretty good. Have you done any tombstones lately? Next, I go back to my quick shade and paint it over the whole thing. The nice thing about quick shade is that it actually produces a varnish, which helps hold things together. To bring back some of my highlights, I take my classic caramel and paint it in just a few areas, dry brushing it so it adds some highlight and some interest. And I do the same with my white. Again, remember layers is an important part of painting. So the next thing I do is take my quick shade and kind of wash a very light tone over everything once again. I don't just want a boring rock, I'm going to add some skeletons. So using the same skeleton army that I used in my bone golem video, 
and doing the same thing, cutting them up into lots of little pieces, I'm gonna add some interest to my stony structure. He just can't help but cut things apart and put them back together like Dr. Frankenstein. Next, we glue each of these cutoff pieces onto the stone base in somewhat random areas, but grouped together so that it feels natural. Remember, we're working in layers, so the next thing to do is coat that with the dark tone from Army Painter. I also like to add in a little bit of moss. Super Moss is a great product that has some dead looking ones, which can be kind of fun. You can also find those at Hobby Lobby at a pretty good price or at garage sales. It looks good, but what about the breath weapon? I went through a lot of trial and error for this, and what I found was that if you take glue sticks, you can make some really cool lightning. The important thing is to find the clear glue sticks, and there's a link in the description of this video. To create your lightning, you're going to essentially cut a zigzag, and you can also shave away at the glue, which is going to give you more of that feel you want, this sort of raised texture, and that's super important for your lightning. Just keep carving away until you find something that looks a little bit like one strand of lightning. You're going to glue several of these together, so don't worry if one alone doesn't look quite right. Once you have a few pieces, it's good to check and see what it's going to look like. I wanted to do a real light source for this, so I took some glow-in-the-dark diamond earrings, peeled out all of the little metal bits so I could separate out the diamond. Then I took some additional wire cutters and cut those off and glued what was left onto my lightning. At this point, I made a few lightning strands, so I just glued each of them together using the same clear glue. Then he carved a hole into the center of the mouth so he could place the entirety of the earring inside. He did this so that he could take out the battery and replace it if needed. He is sometimes rather intelligent. Because I wanted something that felt a little bit like a wash, I used Winsor Newton Aquamarine ink and painted that on top of my glue sticks. I often use water to kind of tone it down, and it looked pretty good once it was done, but it still needed more. And so he mixed Nolzer's pigments mermaid turquoise with army painter's matte white, and then dry brushed it over the small segments to create a very cool looking lightning effect if he do say so himself. Ah, ah, ah. I sent this over to my buddy Frankie D. Crafter, and he was like, dude, you need some cool eyes. And I said, yeah. So I took Matt White from Army Painter and painted a dot at the very center of the black eyes. Then he used the same mermaid turquoise and kind of blended around that. The whole idea of this is to have a white center and then mermaid turquoise around the edges, followed by black. This gives it a super glowy feeling that looks ultra creepy. I wanted it to look like the lightning was coming out of the chest, so I needed some object source lighting. I used the matte white from Army Painter, mixed it once again with the Mermer Turquoise, and then painted it on one side of the ribcage, making it look like there was a slight glow coming from within. So now, at last, you have your Draculish or your Skeleton Dragon. I really do hope you enjoyed watching this video. I would love to see some of you uh, making some Draculishes and Skeletal Dragons using these techniques. If you go out and join my Facebook page, you can post things there. I'd love to chat with you, and we'll see you next time on Critical Crafting. And don't forget to like and subscribe, or I will find you and suck your blood.